Hello everyone, this is Oliver from Neo and today we are going to talk about two different teas we are, which are actually quite similar but quite different at the same time. Today we are going to talk about Gyokuro and Matcha. So in Japan there exist thousands of different teas and green teas and forms of green teas and how green tea is consumed but today we are going to talk about the two most expensive or the uh, most uh, qualitative highest green teas in Japan. And this is on the one hand the matcha and this is on the other hand the gyokuro. So as I said before there are some differences and some similarities. Let's start with the similarities. Both of these teas they are shaded for a long long time. So normally when you ha have the cultivation of green tea, when you have a lower grade green tea, this tea is just left in the sun, not shaded, so not covered before the harvest and then it is taken off, put in the steam bath, dried and then you have the tea as it is and it will be sold like this. This tea is often a little bit bitter, it's a little bit uh, also a little bit drier and it is a less pleasure to drink this tea. But the Japanese in around the 18th century to the 19th century they really discovered this shading of the tea and what it actually does to the tea and often um, it was referred that Mr. Yamamoto was the inventor of this shading even though he was more or less the person who discovered that the shading had actually an effect and in 1841 the shading of especially Gyokuro was perfectioned. Um, then it hit the market and it was directly a huge success. So the shading, what does it actually do? So the shading does um, just before the harvest, it is done for both of the teas. These teas are shaded between 20 and 21 days. What it does actually is that the shading is preventing the catechin or the, the, the theanine, which is in the leaf to turn into catechins. Theanine, more sweet uh, compounds, amino acids, catechins, more bitter. So it inhibits the plant to turn too much into a bitter taste profile. So this is really the main difference why nowadays tea is shaded and especially for Gyokuro which is shaded for a very very long time for these 21 days. Some farmers even shade it up to 20 eight days so four weeks in total. Mr. Sakamoto who is the creator of this tea of this Kyokuro here is doing it for uh, 21 days and also Mr. Nakai he is doing this for 21 days. So that's why this gives me a quite a good comparison of these two different teas and how are how the differences are because sometimes when you're in Japan you hear Gyokuro is actually the base of matcha and matcha is then just the milled or the powder form of the gyokuro. This can be the case but it's often not the absolute truth because what the difference is between the matcha and the gyokuro and you can really see it it's just that um, the powdered form uh, the matcha is somehow a little bit brighter and it has really this strong, especially when it is from a first harvest, high quality. It is from, uh, has a very green and very bright uh, note in its visual aspect. And the Gyokuro is very dark. The main difference between coming from the Gyokuro and then turning into the matcha is the process of the matcha itself. So the matcha finally is a processed Gyokuro but it is not uh, directly coming from the Gyokuro and turning into matcha there is a middle step in between and this is called the tencha so the tencha leaves maybe you have heard of this already this is actually uh, kind of a, a intermediate uh, leaf form of the Gyokuro because when you put the Gyokuro in the Gyokuro is harvested from the top leaf from the best five or even the best 
three so really the top leaves of the plant which are the sweetest we are which are the mildest and which have just the best taste in terms of quality but um, the good quality matcha actually is also deveined and de-stemmed. Meanwhile, some smaller stems can be still with the Gyokuro. You can see it also a little bit on uh, the brighter, brighter parts of uh, this Gyokuro here. There you sometimes have a little smaller stems or smaller parts of the leaves which are in the tea and especially you have also the veins so it's the leaf in a hole. Meanwhile in the production process of the matcha these veins, these stems, everything is separated. If this is not the case you're talking about green tea powder which is also a case or can also appear but it's much less tasty or much less taste profile it's a little bit drier and often it's it's uh, of a lower quality so if you want to really have first harvest and good quality matcha you really go for the ichibancha so the first harvest matcha and then it has to come or the base of the matcha has to be the tencha, so tencha, the deveined and de-stemmed version of the Gyokuro. This is really the main difference between these two. Here as an experiment for myself also is that I brought the Yabukita Gyokuro from Mr. Sakamoto. So it's from the Yabukita breed. This is one type of green tea plant in Japan. It's the most spread. It's around 80% of all the plants used in Japan are Yabukita. Japanese people like Yabukita a lot because it has a very broad spectrum, it has a little bit of sweetness, it has a little bit of the grassiness and it also has a little bit of the stringency which Japanese believe that if the, the tea is a little bit bitter it has this positive health, health effect on their body. Here the same I have a Yabukita matcha from Mr. Nakai so exactly the same breed and now I want to see how the taste is different between these two and just explain you a little bit what is the main difference in terms of drinking how you or preparation how you prepare these two teas is definitely this will be a steamed tea um, this will be a, this tea I will have to brew and this tea here is then mixed with the water and then I drink the whole leaf. So I said it already, here you drink the whole leaf and here you brew the leaf and then you drink the water from the brewed leaf. So this is the main difference um, in terms of preparation of these two teas. So then I would suggest let's go directly into it and have a look how the difference of this tea is. So I'm going to use a Kyusu, 5 grams of the Gyokuro. And I put in 150 milliliters of water, more or less. And the matcha preparation, so this is quite an easy preparation. Now matcha preparation demands a little bit more of utensils so I have the chawan so uh, the bowl of uh, for the matcha then I have the sifter and I have a small spoon here you can also take the chasaku which is the bamboo spoon so. and we can just put it in here and now we are going to sift it just look that you sift through the whole leaves and the whole powder has to go through so this is around two grams which i'm using and i will also Use the same amount of water for this one that we have really a fair comparison. Between these 
two teas. So important that you sift the matcha that it doesn't form or it can form crumbs because green tea absorbs quite quickly a little bit the the humidity and it can form a little bit of crumbs so this is something uh, how you can break it up again and that it gets really smooth and sweet so when you prepare the matcha really this M form or W form which you can do and just glide over it And it's quickly done. And let's go into it. The two teas. Now we have around two minutes done. So we can pour both teas. So if you do a good job, it's empty, nothing at the bottom, all in the glass. And let's have a look. Of with the gyokuro so you can really see there's already a main difference definitely a very very different color the green powder really gives its full power on the color side to the water but I want to make it very fair so really use the exact same amount of water for both of them to really have a comparison of the tea. Voila, good. So now let's see. So you can already see that this tea is very, very different in terms of color. Here we have a kind of a bright golden color. Meanwhile, here the green, strong green color of the tea really comes through. So, and now let's go directly into the tasting. First, starting with a little bit the softer variant. So, starting with the Gyokuro Yabukita. So it's a very smooth and very sweet tea. There's a lot of umami. I have a little bit of a slight bitter note in the beginning, but now it turns really into a soft sweetness of this tea. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of umami in the beginning. And there's this coming with it always a little bit of a bitterness. For me, the Yabukita really shows a little bit of its astringency all the time. It's very slight and this tea is long, long shaded. So this tea here has, has a lot of this sweet taste profile, a little bit of sweet corn, but also a little bit of grassiness coming with it. And a little bit of this hint, this small hint of astringency coming with it but it's very very soft so not at all it's more a refreshing tone than really disturbing kind of bitterness um, um, in uh, the in the water so it's absolutely um, kind of a, a round tea which is very very soft in its being due to the fact that it's very very rich in theanine And the umami flavor so a little bit this kind of savory taste note is really strong with the tea so what i would say is this is a kind of a, a round sweet then a slight fresh with this small hint of astringency and then it goes over really into this savory beautiful savory kind of a, a nearly slight marine note but but it stays on the sweet side absolutely with a small hint it's like the this freshness always comes and then in, it, it disappears and then in the end now i can feel it coming up again so it's a very interesting tea with a very broad taste spectrum now let's go into the matcha so yabukita matcha mm. 
so it's so different so this is an enormous difference when you drink the whole leaf versus um, versus the brood leaf so the the whole leaf directly you have this intense vegetal intense spinachy intense grassy summer grass node which is directly present also what i find is especially with the yabukita you have in the beginning quite a kind of a, a strong citrusy note it is a little bit stronger in the stringency in my opinion it's not overwhelming but it's quite present so it really freshens you up and then it leaves space for this intense grassy note and now in the after taste i have a lot of this sweetness coming in but it really stays with the sweetness so it doesn't turn into a little bit this savory taste note though it stays a lot on the fresh grassy and sweet side without being too strong on the savory notes so this would be the main difference on the sweet and savory here you got a little bit more of this savory taste note while here it still stays with the grassy and fresh note of the tea let's have a second sip Yeah, it's really this, it stays on the side, on the green, fresh, citrusy, a little bit of a tingling note as well. So it's really refreshing. Yabukita on matcha. This is also a matcha which suits very well for a matcha latte. It has really this typical characteristic of a matcha with the fresh grassy tone, a little bit of a citrusy note, not going into the savory, but into a very sweet aftertone, very sweet aftertaste. While this one here really starts with kind of this, um, with this, uh, with the sweet notes, then turning a little, then the freshness comes in, then it turns more into sweetness and then the savory tones come out. So a complete different taste experience of the two teas, both made from the same plant, from the same breed, but very, very different in taste profile. And now it's up to you to see what is actually your favorite taste. Do you like rather the tea from a powdered form where you drink the whole leaf or do you like better when you are having the brewed tea? Leave a comment, share it with me. I'll be happy to answer any questions. I hope you like this session. I wish you a great day. See you. Bye-bye.